Open Norfolk, Virginia. And of course, this action continues through Saturday, the 16th. Tickets still on sale. You can pick them up at member institutions, ticket offices, ticket master, or call the MIAC office. 757951 And the officials for tonight's game, Jackie Sanders, along with Garrick Shannon and Lionel Butler. Lionel Butler will toss it up. And this is a guy you don't want to mess with. You know, he's a boxer. He's a boxer, I know. <laughs> That's why I never got any texts from him. I Morgan, didn't want him to knock me out. Morgan stayed in the dark jerseys, copping in the white. You know, one of the things they talked about is logo showing and things of this nature. They're very particular about uniforms right now, especially with players rolling the the bands up and stuff like and that. You know that's because the style now it used to be long short. I know they the style now is short they, short. They're going that's, back to the old days right, when you and I played. Exactly. <laughs> Morgan State controls the opening tip. Cameron. Stanley Davis gives it off. Syfax. Davis jumper. Good. You talked about Stanley Davis and what he can do, and he comes out firing 12 and a half points per game, and he gets the first two points for the Bears. Getting off to a quick start is what we talked about is one of the keys, and that's what the Bears just did. Great offensive execution, a nice mid-range jump shot by Stanley Davis. Lamar Morgan with the turnover for Coppin State as he stepped on the line before he took that shot. Dribble penetration, and we're going to call out of bounds. It's off the foot. Bear showing a little token pressure. Almost a 2-1-2. Two -two. Now they're trapping out of it. Backing it out. It's Clayton. Off the council, right side, driving the lane. Nice, easy basket for Fulton. Andrews Fulton, Chad the senior out of Philadelphia, PA. Nice finish at the rim for Andrews Fulton. Tied it to a piece. The long jumper from the corner doesn't fall for Devonshire Prince. Move inside, Clayton back outside, moving the ball very well. And now it was Andrew Fulton with all the points for the Eagles. Tell you what, he's off to a great start. That was a nice little mid-range jump shot by Andrew Fulton. Average is 7.4 points per game, but from the corner, the wide open three for Martez Cameron. He's someone, Charlie, that has the potential. He's shooting 38% is Martez Cameron. If he can make threes, that'll be a big plus for the Bears. There goes Clayton and he's fouled. And picking up the foul will be Antonio Gillespie, the senior out of Memphis, Tennessee. You know what is interesting when these two teams play, they know each other very well. They're in inner city school in Baltimore, across town from each other. And I'm sure they play a lot of ball against each other when it's not right. during season, just pick up games and some things of this Some of ball on the playground. Yes, indeed. This one is going to be whistled against David Syfax. Syfax is a guy that has had a nice career during his time under Todd Bozeman. Syfax, a junior out of Pershing High in Detroit, Michigan. Turn around, lefty jumper. Doesn't fall that time, and now it's going to stay on Coppin State's end. His three dark jerseys around that ball could not pull down the rebound you got to call ball 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 so your teammates will know and just let it go Juan Clayton to inbound the ball out of Bowie Merlin went to St. John's College High School
Nice move inside by Andrew Fulton. And Andrew Fulton has been the catalyst for this conference state team. He has all he has six of their points. Tell you what, it's Morgan five, Andrews Fulton six. Yeah. At the other end is Stanley Davis shot one fall. Davis with the ball now, creating the offense. Off the right side, Gillespie all the way across court. Here's Syfax. He hits the three. Off to a great start. He had the ability to help get the Bears over the hump if he can get it going offensively. Nice three-point jumper that time by Syfax. Well, out of bounds, a turnover for Coppin State. That's Stepping the, on the line, that's Cedric the second Council. Time. Yeah. <laughs> Cedric Council on that side. It was Morgan on the near side earlier. Guys got to know where, where the out of bounds line is. Second time in three minutes that they stepped on the side out of bounds line. 16.44 to go in the first half. The winner takes on A&T tomorrow at 8 p.m. right here at the scope. Down the lane, pass off. Off, the, and we're going to go to the line and shoot two. And that foul is going to be whistled against Cedric Council, senior out of Kennesaw, Georgia. Stanley Davis is shooting right at 79%. From the free throw line, had 10 points, eight rebounds in the first meeting. 73-71 loss to Coppin State. That was at Coppin. And then at home last Thursday, he had 11 points and eight rebounds, and he hits the free throw there. The 78% free throw shooter. 14th in the conference in scoring with his 12 and a half points per game average, seventh in rebounding, and ninth in offensive rebounding, and that's a very important stat. Right, no doubt, no doubt. He's the catalyst that makes the Bears go, averaging right at 7.2 rebounds. Plays with a lot of energy. Nice form that time. Four point lead now for Morgan State. They are showing us some full court man pressure, some run and jump action. You no, know, you talk about this Todd Bozeman coach team. They came in and we get a foul, and that's going to be whistled against Rawls. Nice back door cut that time, and a nice feed, a little pocket pass from Andrews Fulton. So Lamar, Lamar Morgan. Morgan at the free throw line. Now this team, this Bears team comes in 9 and 20, 4 and 12 in conference play. But more importantly, 10 of their 12 losses against conference opponents were by a total of 36 points. That's about 3.1 points per game. And so they were in, in all of those games. The only two games they really weren't in was uh, the last one when they lost on last Thursday. And uh, they lost by... 28, I believe, to North Carolina Central. This team is very similar to South Carolina State. In a lot of ball games, just did not close them out. Davis, shot no good. Rebound on the offensive side by Curry. Here's a long jumper by Burke. It's good. Isaiah Burke, freshman out of Bowie High at Annapolis, Maryland. And he's shooting right at 37%. So he's definitely a legitimate three-point shooter for the Bears. Five-point lead right now. Biggest lead for Morgan State. Todd Bozeman, 13th year out of Rhode Island. And an alternating possession arrow will favor. I believe it's going to be Coppin State. But it tied it up. There's a timeout on the floor. 15-17, the time remaining. We're in the first half here at the Scope in Norfolk. You're watching the MIAC Tournament on Flow Sports. Every Marine that answers a nation's call. Battles won. 
In the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, success for our student athletes isn't just measured by wins and losses, points on the scoreboard, or individual stats. It's also measured by their performance in the classroom, in the community, and ultimately graduation. Our student athletes aren't just playing to win a single game. They're playing to win at life because games end, but life keeps on going. The MIAC, educating student athletes for the game of life. 15 17 to go in the first half of play here. This is ball game is a 13 to 8 lead by Morgan State. And a lot of people were surprised, Cy, at how Morgan State may have struggled in conference play only because they started the regular season, not conference schedule, but the regular season five and five against teams like Villanova, Virginia, DePaul, Navy, played George well. Mason. Yeah, they played those schools getting ready for tournament play or conference play and they were five and five against in the start of the season and then they got into conference play and uh, they started conference play two and two and as I said earlier as we get a a moving screen and this is going to be whistled against Medley Bacon and that's the thing that probably drives coach Todd Bozeman uh, just bananas but that was against Compton. Yeah, yeah I'm just saying I'm talking <laughs> about the, the Morgan oh yeah you know uh, team that they've been so you, you see spurts where they're capable of you know playing against high level opponents and then they'll come out and and lay an egg against somebody that uh, they have more talent than like there's an ill-advised turnover right there the doctor and Dr. Jekyll, yeah, that's the high. They are the epitome of that. Todd just jumped off the bench and gave Victor Curry a hit, a earful. <laughs> right. He's probably been doing that a lot this year. <laughs> and another turnover. The seven footer showing his range. And uh, that's probably not the shot that uh, Juan Dixon would like uh, Medley Bacon to be taken. 16.6 .6 turnovers a game for Coppin State. That's what they averaged during the season. Morgan State, 13.6 turnovers. Bounce down low. Battle for the loose ball. Coming out with it is Auslander. 6-6. Six, six, Grad student from Herndon, Virginia. And he's an excellent, Auslander is an excellent three point shooter. Clayton, he hits the three. Two point game. 13 to 11, 14, 08 to go. There's a three ball from the other side for Syfax, and that falls. And that's uh, two threes tonight so far for Syfax, and that will be huge for the Bears if this offense can can start clicking tonight. Clayton gives off to the big fellow Medley Bacon, and another turnover for the Coppin State Eagles early in this contest. That's number four for them. And again, we talked about in our keys. Morgan needed to get off to a quick start, and they're certainly doing that. As Andrews Fulton picks up the foul, score the basket, and an opportunity for a three-point play for Victor Curry. When we come back, there's a timeout on the floor, or is there not? No. They just went over to talk to Coach Todd Bozeman. The whole team did. And Victor Curry will try to complete the three-point play out of Chicago, Illinois. Didn't play the first time these two teams met didn't score the second time they met last Thursday and right now he has three points I'm gonna tell you what that's his average so he's you know reached his average so far he's got a chance to to double it tonight 2.4 points per game and there's a turnover and there's another one long jumper short up and down pace right now I'm not sure Juan Dixon wanted that shot off the hands of Morgan. 
But at the other end, the basket by Tyson Rawls, sophomore out of Newcastle, Delaware. Tell you what, this is the uh, team that I know Coach Bozeman, Bozeman wants to see. They are playing with a lot of energy and a lot of confidence, both on the offensive and defensive end. So they're going to go to the line. Vic Curry picks up the personal foul, which will send Andrews Fulton, the 63% free throw shooter, to the line. Here's a young man is ninth in the conference in rebounding and third on the offensive side of rebounding. 2.5 of his 7.4 rebounds come on the offensive boards. 24 points last Thursday. This young man put up for the Coppin State Eagles and grabbed 18 rebounds against Morgan last Thursday I, at Morgan. I tell you what, his confidence is brimming right now because he feels like he can do the same thing again tonight against the Bears. It's funny, this game, a lot of this game, Charlie, as you well know, it's all about confidence, and, and Andrews Fulton certainly has quite a bit right now because of the way he played against the Bears last Thursday. That was in the season finale. This is the third meeting between these two squads this year. Coppin State won both of them. There's an air ball, but an offensive rebound. The put back, no good by Curry. Still, the lid is on the rim. Curry thought he was fouled down there. He was looking at his arm. Andrew Fulton, I think, lost his contact. Maybe he got cut. But uh, Coppin has a lot of length in that basket when you're talking about uh, Andrews Fulton and uh, Medley Baker. A lot of size. In well, the no use me going down and look for the contact because huh? I can't see it. <laughs> He's looking for it. Charlie Scott at North Carolina, University of North Carolina, he was great back in the day at finding contacts. He could do it, huh? Uh, he could do that. And besides being a great basketball player, he could find the contact lens. Heaven knows where it could have gone. <laughs> this could take forever. <laughs> well. <laughs> Did he get it? He's still looking. And we talked about Morgan State, how they started the season. How about Coppin State? They started the season 0 and 15. They lost their first 15 games, including an overtime game at James Madison, and they still wound up losing that one by 10. But then they started the conference. They won three of their first five conference games when they started, uh, and two of their last seven, including that finale last Thursday we talked about. For their conference losses, though, were by a total of six points. So, again, Juan Dixon, the former assistant at the University of Maryland, ACC Player of the Year back in when he played there, averaged 16 points a game during his career, played with Washington, Portland, Toronto, and Detroit in the NBA. So you have two, the Auslander brothers on that staff. Right. Where you, one is an assistant coach and his brother's playing, right? Exactly. Auslander actually played uh, with Juan at the University of Maryland. Nice high-low action that time. Oh, yeah. uh, you got to finish that, big fella. Yeah, just couldn't get it to go. Devonshire, Devon, Devonish Prince, rather. The three, no good. Off of the hands of... Auslander couldn't nice, get it to go. Nice Euro step that last time by Auslander. Here's Curry. Gives off to Streeter. Streeter back outside to Burke. No good. We got an up and down pace going here. We have a nine point ball game. 21 12. Dumped inside. And a foul is going to be whistled against Curry. And that's going to send Medley Bacon. The freshman at seven feet tall out of Archbishop Curly High in Baltimore, Maryland. He'll go to the line when we come back. 
Timeout on the floor, 11.29 to go. We're in the first half here. MEAC basketball tournament time right here on Flow Sports. Because it's a really fun school. Along with Sal Alexander, Charlie Neal here. Welcome back to the Scope in Norfolk, Virginia, as we continue with our MEAC basketball tournament 2019. State and Coppin State, Baltimore inner city rivals going against each other with a right to advance to tomorrow's second round action where they'll play the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. Number two seed coming into the tournament behind Norfolk State, the number one seed, North Carolina Central, is the number three seed. And at the free throw line, Brandon Medley Bacon, who started uh, just a few games for this Coppin State team. Averaging 10 minutes against Morgan State in the two games that they played against Morgan State. He has eight rebounds. I tell you what, uh, young man has a bright future. He can run. He's long. He just needs to get on the weights and continue to work on his skill level. Yeah, he's seven feet tall. Now, you, you can't coach height. <laughs> you sure can't. <laughs> Syfax looking for somewhere to go with it. Here's Cameron. Cameron working against Auslander. The long jumper, the three is short by Gillespie. He had to get it up because the shot clock was running out on him. Good, real good defense that last time by the Eagles. Drummond down the lane, puts it across the court. Council with the three ball, no good. Rebound on the defensive side by Streeter. Antonio Gillespie looked like the Energizer Bunny there, didn't he? <laughs> right. <laughs> Defensive rebound by Chuan oh. Drummond, but the steal. And again, the three is good by Gillespie. Tell you what, give Martez Cameron the assist because he had great hustle to come up with the steal for Antonio Gillespie to knock down that long-range three. 11-point lead now, biggest lead of the night. And it'll stay on Coppin State's end. Back into the lineup for the Bears of Morgan State is Sherwin Devonish Prince Jr. He's a freshman out of Bladensburg, Maryland. Went to Wise High School. One of the newer high schools in Prince George County, Maryland. Give the Bears a lot of credit. Their energy level on the defensive end is outstanding. And they're doing an excellent job on the, on the glass. And a foul is going to be whistled against Sidefax as it was Andrews Fulton working strong inside out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Faced up. Did a nice little spin move. Excellent footwork that time by Andrews Fulton. One for two right now from the free throw line. He rested a little bit. Look for some pressure if he makes this second one. Chad Andrews Fulton, freshman, a senior rather, averaging 25 minutes for Juan Dixon, and he misses them both. Battle for the loose ball, and it comes down to the Morgan State Bears. Reverse back out by Devin Sh Devinish Prince. Auslander rebounding. Stolen away from Auslander and put back by Streeter. Bears are being very, very active on the defensive end. They've come up with several steals right now. They have four steals. 13-point lead now. 26 to 13 by the Bears. The three ball in and out, but it goes back in for Lander. That's what he does, Charlie. He shoots the three for the Eagles, shooting right at uh, 36 percent. Yep. Right. 94 attempts this year coming into the tournament. And there's a little floater that time that falls for Devinish Prince Jr. Mm -hmm. 
Under nine minutes to go in the first half. Looking inside. Williams. Ivan Williams, freshman out of Newark, New Jersey. Working, gets it. Offensive foul is going to be called. That's an excellent against call. Andrews Fulton. Yeah, he put that chicken wing out there, and it was it was uh, almost like a not a flagrant foul, but he stuck it in his throat, so to speak, and uh, it is way too high. Great call that time. I really like the energy that Morgan is playing with right now. The baseline jumper off the mark by Devonish Prince. They get the ball back and an easy two for McRae Pace. Nice uh, loose ball that Cameron came up with. Nice little shuffle, shuffle pass to McRae Pace. But there's going to be a foul inside. And that's going to be whistled against McRae Pace. Right. McCray Pace, sophomore out of Egan Catholic in Philadelphia. I actually recruited uh, uh, Pace, McCray Pace, an uh, excellent player, had a great high school career out of Philly. Went up to see him play several times uh, when I was head coach at North Carolina A&T. At the free throw line is Andrews Fulton. He's a 63% free throw shooter for the Eagles of Coppin State. Right now, he's one for five from this charity stripe, and uh, that's uh, that's hurting the, the Eagles. You, you got to take advantage of getting to this free throw line. He has no rebounds and seven points. Make it eight right now. Thirteen points. Deficit for Coppin State. Morgan State has the advantage. As we always say, can you beat a team three times during the season? That's hard, Charlie. Trapped in the corner. And getting it back out. Shot clock at seven. Finger roll won't fall. And a defensive rebound that time by Council. That was a nice rebound that Council went and got with two hands. He rebounded out of his area. And the foul is going to be whistled against Stanley Davis. We're going to take a timeout when we come back. It'll be Coppin State trying to cut into the deficit. They're down by 13 here at the Scope in Norfolk. Seven thirty-seven remaining first half of play, along with Sal Alexander, Charlie Neal courtside. Here at the Scope in Norfolk, and it's MEAC basketball tournament time, 2019, right here on Flow Sports. Glad you could tune in. This Coppin State team came in averaging 63 points a game, while Morgan State came in averaging about 72 points per game. Coach of the Eagles of Coppin State. 90, 91, 93. He was the coach of the year in the Mid-East Athletic Conference. As you see, the free throw by Jawan Clayton, sophomore, red shirt out of St. John's College High. Product of Bowie, Maryland. Yeah, he definitely, uh, Ron Mitchell was the face of the Coppin State program for a lot of years. He's now down in Kennesaw, Georgia, and we hope that uh, Coach Mitchell is enjoying retirement and watching us on Flow Sports tonight. Baseline. Travel. Too many steps by Malik Miller. Nice move, nice idea, but you got to slow down a little bit, young fella. 12-point game. 30 to 18. Three ball. And it's good by Ivan Williams. The freshman who's shooting 25% from behind the arc. But he pulls his team to within nine. 30 nice. to 21. Nice shot preparation that time by Williams. Held his follow through. Got his feet set. 
can the three-point jump shot. Devin is Prince trying to get it, and we got out of bounds. Juan Dixon all the way down trying to help the officials blow the whistle. <laughs> He's doing a little officiating, coaching territory. You want to do all the officiating you can, get as many calls as you can. Morgan to inbound, the short jumper off the glass, no good. A little bit too hard that time for Tyson Rawls. Pressure in the backcourt, and Williams gets it into the front court finally. Behind the back dribble, pulls up, jumper! No good. Board by Miller, Malik Miller. Down the lane goes Rawls. Knocked away, back outside. Here goes Miller, puts it up, block inside. Good block inside that time by Cedric Council. Excellent defense on both teams' part. Devinish Prince is really getting it after on the defensive end, and that was a nice block at the rim. Rim protector was counseled. Clayton running the offense now. Averaging 14 points per contest for this Coppin State Eagle team. They came in 7 and 24, 7 and 9 in conference play. And Council will try correction, make that Clayton will try to complete the three-point play and go to the line and cut into this deficit and make it a six-point deficit. He gave him a little Michael Jordan that time. You reach, I teach. They reached. Nice cross dribble, went to the line. Chance to finish two-point play. The old-fashioned way. Three-point play the old-fashioned way. And he does it. And it's a six-point game. It's been an eight to nothing run since Morgan State had a 14 to nothing lead. Let's see if they can break that drought they just did with a three ball from the corner off the hands of Antonio Gillespie. Nice long range jumper that time by Gillespie. Shot it with a lot of confidence. Council is really getting the job done on the glass. Todd didn't like the call. He's shooting two. That's 10 team fouls against Morgan State, only four against Coppin State. That's huge right there. And that's what uh, Coach Bozeman is a little bit upset about, the, the foul disparity. Made one of two. Eight point game with 5.15 to go before halftime. Pretty good defense that time by the Bears. Auslander driving inside. Puts it up and he travels. And that's what you want to make Auslander do. He's a catch and shoot kind of guy. Tried to do a little bit too much off the bounce that time. Got called for walking. His Coppin State team. Six regular season titles. Four tournament titles. And there's a jumper from the baseline. It's good by Devinus Prince Jr. Ten point game right now. 
Morgan State up 35 25. Devonis Prince is playing a very solid game both on the offensive and defensive end. Short. Four twenty two to go before halftime. Four NCAA appearances for Coppin State. And now that warning to both coaches well, by actually, Jackie Sanders. To to Todd. And he's Todd is about to put himself in harm's way. He and Jackie Sanders were having a heated discussion. Jackie told Todd to be quiet. He wouldn't, and so he gave him a bench warning. Next one will be a tech. And that jumper is good that time by Devinis Prince. Having a heck of a first half. Devinis Prince now with six points. Averages right at 11 points for the Bears. He is really giving them some energy tonight. Clayton. Working against that man to man defense. They've got a mismatch inside. Get it to the seven footer. Auslander back of the iron. They're going to go down the other way. And that foul is against the Bears. Make that against the Eagles of Coppin State. When we come back, there's a timeout on the. Three forty one remaining here in the first half. A couple of runs here for this Coppin State team. They were down 13 30 to 17 went on an 11 6 run to cut it within six. But then since that time it was Morgan State coming back with a run of their own 7 1 run and they've increased their deficit to 37 25 a 12 point lead right now. I tell you what both teams actually are doing a pretty good job statistically from the three point line. Morgan is shooting 60 60 percent from the three. Coppin is shooting 50 percent from the three. We'll take those stats any day. Medley Bacon at the free throw line one of three at the stripe tonight. He has one point. And I really like Medley Bacon. He's just a freshman. He's long a legitimate seven foot. He's got nice form from the free throw line. All he needs to do is continue to work on his skills and live in the weight room. And he has a couple of rebounds for Juan Dixon. Yeah, he's got a chance. He's going to be a, a force of a few years from now in the, in the Mid East Athletic Conference. Travel. Yep, that's a great call. Drug that pivot foot. Taquan Drummond, sophomore out of Newport News, Virginia. Into Woodside High and right down the road is where he hails from. The Bears have really been scrappy on the defensive end in this first half. The big fella's got to keep working. There you go. He's got to, Andrews Fulton's got to throw that was nice action that time. But the pass, he's got to throw it up. And that's what Medley Baker is telling Andrews Fulton right now. Hey, guy, I'm seven foot. Throw it up. And, and, and that's what uh, he didn't do. Pull up jumper by Devin is Prince. No good. The big fellow grabs the rebound. Long rebound. Came down to Medley Bacon. Tried to dump it inside. That was McCray Pace to Medley Bacon, but to no avail. And a foul is going to be whistled against Auslander. As Isaiah Burke took it in strong to the last. That's something that Coppin with Andrews Fulton and Medley Bacon being in the program. They've got to work on that high low execution because both of those guys are legitimately six eight six nine and seven feet. They get that going and put some perimeter shooters around that would make their offensive attack you know, outstanding something to be reckoned with. Isaiah Burke the freshman. 
at the line for the Bears of Morgan State. He's one of one at the charity stripe. He has four points so far tonight. Misses the second one, but the offensive rebound is pulled down that time by Malik Miller. Down the lane off the glass and a foul on the big fellow. Medley Bacon. And that's what again, Devinus Prince is playing with no fear, both on the offensive and defensive end. Attacked the rim that time. Only has two points, but uh, he's done an outstanding job just being in the flow, being a, a floor general, being, being a little pest out there, so to speak. 13 point lead once again. The biggest lead enjoyed by Morgan tonight was 14. 231, the time remaining here in the first half. So, mentally. He's picked up three personal fouls here in the first half. And it's 40 to 26, which equals the biggest lead that Morgan State has enjoyed this evening. DeWan Clayton, nice uh, dribble handoff that time. That action. If you don't get over and cut it off, you got a straight line drive, and he was able to utilize his, his, his ball quickness off the bounce. Miller picked up the personal foul. Clayton at the free throw line. They've held him pretty much in check tonight, haven't they? Right, they sure have. That's that's big. It's all it's reminding me of South Carolina State against uh, Ryan and Dino. Nine points for him so far, though. He's missed one free throw. 40 to 28. Auslander will pick up another one. No, yes, it will be against Auslander. That is his second. Coppin State, that's the eighth team foul against the Eagles. One and one at the free throw line for Isaiah Burke. Can't hit the front end of the one and one. You got to take advantage of these. These uh, free opportunities get a chance to increase that lead. Reverse layup. Watch that. Oh, Clayton. Razzle dazzle that time <laughs> by DeWan Clayton. And it'll be Coppin State's ball. 10 point ball game right now. 127 to go. Substitutions coming in for Todd Bozeman as we go down the stretch run of this first half. Again, I'm I'm really impressed with the energy level right now for the first time tonight. The Morgan State Bears are going to show a 2-3 zone cuz they've been attacking with their defense and it's been full court man pretty much the entire first half of the last 115 they're going to show some two three zone that's an e illegal screen that time by Cedric Council you've got to be stationary on your on your screens David Syfax back in the lineup right now for Todd Bozeman. Victor Curry also in there along with Martez Cameron. Stanley Davis. And Sherwin Devinish Prince. Those are the five on the floor for the Bears with under a minute to play. Shot clock at seven. 
That time the Bears showed some nice continuity offense. We're taking the ball from strong side to weak and having a slice cutter space in the floor, which opened up the driving lane for Devonish Prince. So double bonus. And Devonish Prince will go to the line, the freshman out of Bladensburg, Maryland. He started every game for Todd Bozeman this year. A freshman scored double figures in 17 games and made the all rookie team in the MEAC this season. That tells you a lot about the confidence level that the coaching staff, staff has in um, Mr. Devonish Prince. 45 seconds remaining. He misses the second free throw. Auslander, yes. And that's what he does, Charlie. He can sink that three, cut into the lead. Eight point ball game. Same four, continuity offense again. By four, the four seconds difference between the game and shot clock. Shot clock at seven seconds. Auslander lost it. Shot clock violation. Four point seven seconds left is a long time. Watch for Clayton to try to push it all the way. Use speed dribble. Well, they actually. Now they're going to call a timeout, I think. Right. Good timeout by uh, Coach Dixon to set up a play to see if he can get a screen and get DeWan Clayton open so that he can attack off the bounce, see if he can get to the rim because he has excellent speed off the bounce. Well, it's been an up and down ball game for both of these squads. Of course, Morgan State jumped out early on this Coppin State team at the one point they led by 14 a couple times in this first half. Then Coppin came back. Morgan went ahead again with about two and a half minutes to go. They were ahead by 14, but it's now an eight point game with 39 seconds left. And if the Eagles can score, Right before the half, that would be a big momentum builder as you go into the second half. Look for an up screen right now on Dewan Clayton to see if he can utilize his speed. You got two shooters spaced, Auslander. And Lamar Morgan in the corners. Medley Bacon is probably going to try to set up a, a back screen or a front screen to get DeWan Clayton open and let, let him push it. 4.7 seconds is the time remaining. Which is a long feet. time. 94 feet. This Eagle team has to go. They get it into the big fellow. Medley Bacon. And it won't fall that time for Drummond. He went coast to coast. Tried to get it to go. Eight point lead here at halftime. Winner goes on to play AT tomorrow, right now, right here at 8 o'clock p.m. We're at halftime at the Scope in Norfolk. It's the MEAC tournament right here on Flow Sports. Back with our halftime activities in just a moment. This is a really fun school. We're at halftime here at the Scope in Norfolk, 41 33. Is our score it's the first round action men's tournament 2019 for the MEAC and it's Coppin State trailing by eight points at the half. I'm joined by Irvin Smith, faculty athletic representative from Baltimore and the Eagles of Coppin State, both teams from Baltimore. So we got to make sure we de determine what school you're representing. Coppin State struggling a little bit here in the first half. This is a team that beat Morgan State twice during the regular season, and we know when we talk about Beating teams three times in a season is not the easiest thing to do, is it? True. Absolutely true. 
it's a good rivalry. We've had that rivalry going for a number of years now, and uh, it's going to be an exciting game. It is an exciting game. Let's talk about what's happening on the campus on at Coppin State. New president, and things are going pretty good. Let's talk about this new president. Th things are going well. We are, are making a big impact in the community. Uh, she's doing a lot of great things. We, we're looking forward. We uh, our nursing program, which is uh, regionally accredited, uh, just got reaccredited, and we're looking for some big things out of her. Let's talk about the challenges an inner city school like Coppin State faces. Yeah, I think I, I, I think one of our major challenges is also probably one of our best assets is that we can actually pull from that community and we can actually see the change that comes about in, in the students that we have. Um, we, 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 we can send them back into that community and make them ambassadors for us uh, to bring in newer students. We, 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 we sit on some pretty uh, valuable real estate uh, in West, uh, West Baltimore. So uh, we're looking forward to uh, continuing that legacy, uh, making sure that we uh, make a big impact in the community. Um, and I think it's going to be okay for us. Well, one of the things that does you do face as far as the challenge is you've almost become a commuter school. And, you know, sometimes that's not that's good in some instances. Sometimes it's bad because from an ad academic standpoint of view, a lot of students do not stay on campus. They do not have the real experience of campus life like you do at a lot of colleges. Absolutely. And that could be uh, sometimes good, sometimes, sometimes bad. Sometimes bad, yeah. I, I think for us it's probably going to be a benefit. Um, one of the things that we also pride ourselves on is uh, first generation students, those students who have never had uh, anyone else in their family to come to college. And so um, we also have a much older population of students, and so that's, that feeds into that commuter student. Um, but for the most part, it's working to our favor right now. And as we continue, one of the things that I would probably like to say is that Coppin is a very technological uh, campus. And so as long as we stay on top of uh, the technology, then I think we'll be okay. What do you see happening in terms of growth? in terms of the school. Is there room, infrastructure to grow? I know you have a fantastic facility as far as athletic and wellness center on campus. In terms of the school, is there room, infrastructure to grow? I know you have a fantastic facility as far as athletic and wellness center on campus. Is there room for you to grow? At the newest building on our campus is our Science and Technology Center, and it is a lot of uh, room and space in there to grow. Um, and I think that that's going to probably be the, the major appeal in years to come because all of that is cutting-edge technology in there to add to the technology that we already had. And so it's already working to our favor in terms of recruitment and increasing our enrollment. Finances is always an issue with... HBCUs, trying to become solvent financially. What is Coppin State doing to maintain that financial solvency? Again, I'm going to have to highlight our nursing program and our science and technology. All of, all of the faculty in that science and technology center are, are, are fantastic uh, researchers. That research brings in a lot of dollars. Uh, our nursing program, our health sciences programs, all of those actually uh, bring in new dollars. Um, I, th I think that there's still a lot of room for us to grow in that area, uh, but we'll see how it works out. This is a sports program that's never had football, and that's a very costly sport. Has it ever been a talk or any talk about maybe bringing football onto the Coppin State campus? We, we talk about it all the time. I think we need to get our enrollment up. Uh, uh, large enough to be able to afford it, but uh, football is a costly sport, but it's also a revenue-producing sport, as you well know. So, uh, if we can get our enrollment up to a to a magic number, then we would more than welcome football on our campus. Uh, it's certainly we have a club football team now, and they have a huge following, uh, and so it would be a big benefit not only to Coppin but to the surrounding community also. All right. Irvin Smith, faculty athletic representative from Compton State University, spending time with us here at halftime. And hopefully the team does a has a better second half than the first half. Definitely will. All right. Well, thank thanks you so much. much. Always good to see All you. All right. Thanks.
We're at halftime here at the Scope in Norfolk BAC Basketball right here on Flow Sports. Stay, stay with us. We'll be back with more in just a moment. It's called Battles 1. Forty-one thirty-three. Our score here at halftime. Morgan State with the eight-point lead at the half over the Eagles of Coppin State. Winner goes on to face North Carolina A&T, the number two seed, tomorrow right here as Miac Basketball Tournament Time 2019 continues on Flow Sports. Thirty-three forty-one. Our scores. We get ready to start the second half from the scope here in Norfolk, and it's Coppin State trailing by eight over the Bears of Morgan State. And I'm with Cy Alexander, Charlie Neal here. Let's take a look at some of the first half highlights from this particular contest. Of course, we know that Morgan State started out on fire and uh, built a 14-point lead early on in the contest. There in the dark jerseys, right here. I tell you what. Uh... We talked about in our keys that Morgan needed to get off to a quick start, and they did just that. Their, their intensity both on the offensive and defensive end, in particularly the defensive end was outstanding. Uh, Devin Prince, I thought, did a great job. It might not show up on the stat sheet, but his effort level, uh, Martez Cameron, David Sifax, all those guys, because actually Stanley Davis was kind of quiet. They only had uh, four points, but those other guys kind of carried the load for them. Well, when we talk about stats, some of the things that really stand out, of course, the field goal percentage from one of the teams. You're talking about Morgan State shooting 42 percent, Coppin State shooting 45 percent from the field, but I think the disappointing stat is the free throws for Coppin State. 11 of 19 in the first half compared to 7 of 10 for Morgan State. Another big key was Morgan State shooting 60% from the three-point line, 6 of 10, and they got 18 points off of 13 turnovers. Right now, they're leading off of turn points off of turnovers, 18 to 5. If Coppin is going to turn this thing around, they've got to take care of the basketball. They can't turn the ball over. They turned the ball over, like you said, 13 times. Morgan did a better job protecting the ball. Only six turnovers here in the first half. You're talking about some leading scores for the Bears. They've kind of spread it around. David Syfax with six points. Stanley Davis with four. Martez Cameron with three. Sharon Devinish with nine. Gillespie with six. But five rebounds pulled down by McCray Pace. So that's a big, uh, big rebounding edge that they have. Actually, Morgan is actually trailing in the rebounding department by four because four rebounds by Council, four rebounds by Auslander, and three by Drummond for Coppin State. I tell you what, Coppin State has got to take care of the basketball, make free throws. And they could get this thing turned around. All right, we're going to take a timeout, step aside, back with the second half from the scope in just a moment. Believe it, Geico could save you 15% or more on car insurance. As we get ready to start the second half, Charlie Neal, Cy Alexander, courtside with you here at the scope in Norfolk, Virginia. And it's Morgan State and Coppin State doing battle. Winner goes on to the morrow's next round where they'll face the number two seed, the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. You talk about uh, that, how tough that's going to be when they both played A&T twice during the regular, or, or each once during the regular season. Morgan State lost 52-57-53, and Coppin State lost 81-70. to So they're both tight games. Both were in the ball game against A&T, but what happened was turnovers down the stretch allowed the Aggies to pull away. But first things first, let's see who can take care of the basketball. I was going to say, what, <laughs> right? if you're Juan Dixon, what do you say to your team at halftime? Take care of the basketball. 
to make sure you take better shots. And I want the ball in DeJuan Clayton's hands because he's got big time quickness, can make things happen. And Andrews Fulton got to continue to be a force on the interior. And of course, we couldn't start the second half without Dewan Clayton getting his headband right. right. Had to get it right, right. <laughs> get that afro. <laughs> what do you say to your team if you're Todd Bozeman? Just keep doing what you're doing. Stay. Keep the intensity level up, especially on the defensive end. And there's a block inside. And here comes Clayton. And he's fouled. He's going to go to the line for two. And picking up the foul for the Bears will be Martez Cameron, senior out of Chicago. And we talked about the great first half that Devonis Prince had, but that last shot, and Coach Bozeman is kind of talking with him about that. There was, you know, he, he went into a, the land of giants, and it, it, it was nothing there. Didn't need to. Right. There was absolutely nothing there for him to attack. And now you got uh, Dewan Clayton a chance to get the Eagles off to a good start. Uh, he was four for five in the first half. He's got two coming up right now. Hits the first 29 points, nine rebounds, 13 assists in the two meetings between these two schools during the regular season. And just what we talked about, Charlie, last game a week ago, 83-69. And uh, you wouldn't know it by the way the Bears are playing today. Six point ball game. Play 30 seconds here, the second half. Down low. And a block inside that time by Andrews Fulton. Wide open three short. This time wouldn't fall for Syfax. Who has hit 32% from free three point range this year, but hasn't taken that many either. Right, He's only right. taken 21 coming into the game. That's no good. And rebound by Stanley Davis. Davis dishes off. Back outside. Comes to Gillespie. Gillespie, along with Devonish Prince. Devonish Prince pulls up. No good. Rebound by Morgan. And right now, the Bears don't seem to be playing with any control on offense. They're playing, but there's no control. They're just kind of out there. And two bad shots taken by Devonis Prince and Clayton makes them play at the other end. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's just what I was going to say. And it's a four point game. Forced it in the inside, but made it. That's Stanley Davis. Well, that's who needs to start taking over. He's the, the leader of this team. He's got to get it going on the offensive end. Score it. Nice penetration that time by Andrews Fulton. Finished strong at the rim and gave the muscle sign. I'm surprised they didn't give him a technical foul for that. Right, right. <laughs> and if, he, if he does it again, look out for Jackie Sanders or Garrett giving him one. Because it's a form of taunting, especially right, exactly. when he's right there in front of the mm -hmm. defensive player who was guarding right, who, him. Who guarded him. <laughs> right, for sure. And you, all of a sudden, we've got a four-point ball game. And could cut it to three. And that's, again, we talked about the Morgan State team. They have been like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And, and right now, they, there's no continuity on their offense. Get the ball to Stanley Davis. Do what you did in the first half. You had a 14-point advantage, but then give Coppin State credit because they came out and said, we're not going to let you do what you did in the first half. They're attacking off the bounce. Nice move that time by Syfax, and that's really not his game. He's more of a catch-and-shoot kind of guy, but was able to have a straight line drive to create the foul opportunity. Council picked up the foul. Syfax at the line, 67% free throw shooter. He has six points, 
first free throw attempt today. And Stanley Davis with 1740 to go in the second half has three fouls. That is huge because Coach Bozeman has got to keep him on the bench probably over the next seven minutes. The council for Portland State also with three fouls. As is Medley. But uh, Coach Dixon is going to keep Council on the floor. Morgan, turnover. McCameron, dishes off, no good. Almost a strong offensive rebound. And it went out of bounds, and it'll be Morgan State maintaining possession on their own basket. Martez Cameron, senior out of Chicago, will inbound. Big break that time for the Bears. Quick jumper by the lefty doesn't fall for Devonish Prince. As well as Devin's first half, I'm a little disappointed in his play in the second half, particularly on the offensive end. Wide open for the three, and it's good off the hands of Lamar Morgan. Excellent weak side pass by Andrews Fulton. He got the ball in the around the free throw line area, looked weak, found Lamar Morgan for the three point jump shot. Three-point ball game. This is as close as Coppin State has been in a long time. Shot clock at 10 seconds. Syfax gets it over to Devonish Prince. Prince double team down low. Across court. Long pass. Almost a steal. Shot clock at one. Just gets it off. And they get the rebound. Syfax now try to set things up. Get it going again. Some motion wide low inside a foul is going to be whistled and this is going to go against Andrews Fulton. Meanwhile at the free throw line will be Devonish Prince. Nice backdoor cut that time by Devonish Prince and Victor Curry found him with a nice backdoor pass got fouled at the rim. That looked better as far as the offensive continuity it wasn't one on one. It was almost like the first couple of possessions Morgan State. My my ball, my shot, that kind of thing. Just taking shots that were ill-advised. Missed it. He has nine points. He's three of five at the line tonight. Devin is Prince. An 88% free throw shooter coming in. But he's missed a couple. Yeah, has really not had a great start of the second half. As well as he played in the first half. Both of them no good. And being a freshman, that could affect his psyche. Under 16 to go. From the three point block, that missed everything. That was off the hands of Morgan. Now the officials jump in, Andrews Fulton. Separates him from Victor Curry, the junior out of Chicago. Now, let me see a, what they call. Right, right. Lionel Butler and Garrick Shannon jumped in the middle of that to make sure that whatever was going on happened wasn't going to happen. Right. What they, they were what they were thinking about <laughs> talking about happening. They nipped that in the bud quickly. They certainly did. Good officiating crew here tonight. Calling the two coaches. And a timeout oh, being they, called. They're actually uh, going to see maybe it was a flagrant foul or something. Oh, they're going to look at the monitor and check things out and see if they find anything flagrant on either one of these squads or players. We're talking about Victor Curry, the junior at six foot six. And Andrews Fulton at 6-7 for Coppin State. Now I know that 
the ball was going the other way. <laughs> That's all. It right. was going to Morgan State. They just way. stopped it. Well, something was going on down there. We're going to take a time out, step aside while they kind of sort things out over at the monitor. 1542, the time remaining in a three point ball game. And Morgan State, 45 42 over Coppin. Because as long as there are battles, Always be Marines. Back here at the scope in Norfolk, Lionel Butler is going to come over and let us know what's going on. All right, what we have is a double personal foul. White one and blue three. Double personal foul. We just point an interruption. We just keep playing. All right. Double personal foul against Andrews Fulton and Martez Cameron. I mean, correction, Victor Curry from Morgan State. Double personal foul, one on each player. And they'll just resume play at the point of interruption. Right. Keep on going. We'll keep it moving. Keep it moving. Each picked up a foul. And that also adds to the team's fouls. Three team fouls on each squad what Morgan State needs to do in running their continuity offense they really need to share the basketball and, and there's again Devin is Prince is trying to do too much right now in my opinion Charlie's probably 0 for 4 right now in the second half and missed the free throw got to be a little more patient Coach Juan Dixon pulled Chad Andrews Fulton out of the lineup. What a follow up by Justin Steers just coming into the lineup. And he slammed that one down with a vengeance, didn't he? Brought the crowd down with that play. One point ball game, 45 44. Closest that Coppin State has been all game. Justin Steers is actually wearing a, a different number from my uh, Q stat sheet. He's wearing 11 tonight. Here's a turnover. And it's going to stay on Morgan State's end. And again, you make a great play, and then you come back and you negate it with the not so smart play by Mr. Steers. Long inbounds pass, and the baseline jumper is going to be short off of the hands of Martez Cameron. It's going to be Coppin State's ball. And this bump is going to go. And it's getting a little chippy out here, Charlie. Two inner city schools from Baltimore playing to stay alive in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference tournament. And uh, a lot of chirpings going on right now. And the game is getting a little more physical. I'm sure that the officials are going to try to keep this thing under control. No good for Coppin State. That was a big miss that time by Auslander, who had a wide open three, could have tied the ball game. Almost a steal. Baseline, good by Devinish Prince. He's not shy, I can tell you that. As a freshman, he's going to shoot till he. No, he's not a freshman <laughs> at this point of the season. Am I right? Well, you're right. You played 29, yeah, right. 30 you're games. Not a <laughs> Let's just say this. He's not shy of being a sophomore. <laughs> he wouldn't be shy if he was a grad right, student. Right, no doubt. He's got the green light from Coach Bozeman. 4 of 13 from the field is he so far with 11 points. 4, 49, 44. 
At the half it was a 41 33 lead by Morgan State. So it's been an 11 to 8 run. And at one point it was an 11 to 4 run as they pulled it within one. That is Coppin State. Nice up and under on. Oh, he was looking for the contact Stanley Davis and it didn't come. And he missed a wide open layup. Nice step through by Davis. Inside, nice move by Steers. Steers has come off the bench and played an important role as instant offense for the Eagles. Steers came in averaging 5.6 points per contest, made the all rookie team for Coppin State. Davis. Back outside from the corner. The jumper, no fall for Cameron. Auslander. It's a good call right there, right? And that foul is going to be whistled against Martez Cameron, the senior out of Chicago, Illinois. And this that is, is the second. This is Stanley Davis time now. He's got to take over the ball game to keep Morgan from going home. As you see, Dewan Clayton is trying to do the same for the Coppin Eagles. So two players in foul trouble with four fouls oh, on nice each team. Durers layup and it works. And what do we have? A one point ball game, 49 48 on that basket by Dewan Clayton. Nice razzle dazzle cross dribble that time by Dewan Clayton. Now speaking of the fouls people in foul trouble for Morgan State it is Curry but we get a three point ball down at the other end. Nice three point jump shot by Isaiah Burke. Auslander wide open. Yes. And that's what he does. You cannot leave him open. He's a three point shooter. You've got to know where Auslander is at all times. He's been open twice in the corner. Missed the first one, made the second one. Cameron, nice follow up. Stanley Davis. Puts up the miss. That's uh, that's what being a leader is all about. You're not getting a lot of shot opportunities. Go to the boards. Get it like that. And a foul is going to be whistled against Cameron. As, as DeJuan Clayton went strong to the host. There's a timeout on the floor. 10.49 to go. A lot of time. And a one-point ball game possibly. When we come back, 54-51 right now at the MIAC Tournament on Flow Sports. At the scope here in Norfolk, Virginia, along with Alexander Charlie Neal 1049 to go 54 51 and 11 points at the half for Dewan Clayton he has six here in the second half and he's going to go to the free throw line to try to cut into this three point deficit that the Coppin State Eagles are facing. I tell you what you want to keep the ball in uh, Mr. Clayton's hands because he is excellent off the dribble utilize that high ball screen space the shooters Lamar Morgan. And Auslander in the corners, screen roll with the big fella, Andrews Fulton, and just let Clayton make a play. And right now he's at the free throw line, I think going to the line for two shots, can cut it to a one-point lead. I like the intensity level that DeWan Clayton is playing with, and he's playing under, under control. Even though he's playing at a high pace, he's still under control. He is six of seven at the line tonight. He missed one. He has 17 points in the ball game. He had 11 at the half, has six here in the second half. He also has four assists 
in the contest. You're trying to come back, you got to make your free throws. That was his first miss. Second miss. Six of eight right now. Makes the second, and it's a two point ball game. 50, 54 52. I really like Coppin's length. They've got some length on this team. Well, Auslander, and you've got this right. kid, Medley, Medley Bacon. Andrews Fulton. Nice cross dribble that time. Nice pull up by Stanley Davis. Big time play on the offensive end. Stanley Davis continues to put the points on the board for the Bears of Morgan State. He has 10 points in the contest. Four of nine shooting from the field overall. Has not attempted a three pointer, so he knows his weaknesses. <laughs> right, right. Why do it if I don't do well with it? And he ran to the three that three line that last time, Charlie, just to show you he can shoot a three. By the, and that was a pass off. Nice head fake that time. A little show and go by Martez Cameron, senior out of Chicago. And Medley Bacon picks up the foul. That was a pass off. It was not a shooting foul. Medley Bacon will go to the sideline. He's had a pretty good first half as he picks up his fourth personal foul. So Andrew. Andrews Fulton and Medley both with four fouls for Juan Dixon squad. They've got to sit at least three minutes. One of them until the six minute mark. And a nice move by Cameron down the lane as he had the ball almost taken away from him. In the land of the Giants, the little fella went in there and scored a key layup. Six point game right now, 58-52. Coppin has pulled it within one on three occasions. Have not been able to take the lead or tie it up. Steers. And it's good. That's the play I would keep running that high ball screen for Clayton. Make the, them have to switch. Pitch it back for the elbow jump shot by Steers. Nice execution by the Eagles. Devinish Prince driving down the lane. Devinish Prince shot clock at four off the iron. No good on the boards cleared by Morgan. You want to get the ball in Clayton's hand. Utilize that high ball screen. Almost a turnover that time. Council almost threw it away. Council has it inside and he scores. Nice pass that time from Lamar Morgan. On a nice slip screen by Cedric Council. Slipped the screen, went to the basket. Morgan threw it over the top. Council finished at the rim. Chance to get a three point play the old fashioned way. And pull it to within one. And they've been getting close, but they can't get over the hump against Morgan. Council shooting 56% from the free throw line. He is one for two at the charity stripe tonight and he clanks that one off the front of the iron and it's still a two point game and we got a foul. And that's going to be against Justin Steers in the backcourt. As uh, you hear coach Juan Dixon telling Justin Steers you've got to be smart. We're right here. Eight minutes to go. We're only down two points. We don't need any silly fouls. That foul was way away from the ball. Had Sorry. nothing to do with the play. That's the fifth team foul against Coppin State. Morgan State has seven, so Coppin will be shooting one and one on the next foul. Barring yeah. a shooting foul. Got to be smart. Eight minutes to go. It's 
stay here. Jackie Sanders on the call. Who to call it on? Is that on council? Yes, it's called it on Cedric Council. I guess he was trying to get defensive rebounding position and, and utilize his hands versus his body. Time out on the floor. 7.50 is the time remaining here. And we have a two-point ball game. 58-56. Morgan State over Coppin. Each and every Marine that answers a nation's call. Battles won. Along with Cy Alexander, Charlie Neal, courtside, MIAC basketball, 2019 version of this tournament. Someone trying to punch their ticket to the big dance. Of course, the men's tournament, I think, is in Phoenix, Arizona this year, right? The Final Four? No, in uh, actually in Minneapolis. Oh, Minneapolis. Yes. That's what it is. Cold weather city. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The women are in Tampa. That's oh, okay. That's smart. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> They're going where it's warm. And next year, it's in Atlanta. Uh, Final Four 2020. 58 56. Pull up jumper. No good. Auslander rebounds for Morgan's uh, Coppin State. And the Bears are trying to do, trying to deny Isaiah Burke is trying to deny Dewan Clayton all over the court. That's who they. Want to keep the ball out of his hands. And it's a good call because Burke was holding him, but good defense that time and a good strategy because, again, Clayton right now is you want the ball in his hands, try to run as many possible screens and rescreen because he's got great ball skills, can finish at the rim, can shoot the mid range, and can find the spot up shooters in Lamar Morgan and Oslander. Chance to tie it. One point away from tying the ball game for the first time in this contest since it was tied at two apiece. And a miss, but an offensive rebound pulled down by Andrews Fulton. And a three by Oslander. Big shot by Kent Oslander. It never fails, Charlie. You don't get that defensive rebound. Offensive team gets the offensive rebound. Always turns out for an opportunity from the three-point line. First lead of the game for the Bears of Morgan State. Three ball, no good, and it's Andrews Fulton with the rebound. Oslander with the ball in his hands. Working against Gillespie. Osland another three back of the iron no good battle for the loose ball and it's going to stay down on Coppin State's end as Syfax couldn't control great hustle that time by Andrews Fulton he's playing hard even though he has four personals that's right he does there's three players with four fouls on this Coppin State squad Fulton is one council the other and Medley Duck Bacon the third with four fouls. Steers turn around. Oh, nice Good. move. Nice drop step. Kiss off the glass for Justin Steers. Four point lead now for the Coppin State Eagles. They've trailed throughout this ball game until just a moment ago. Here's Los Oslander. He lost it. But good defense. And now Steers is ailing a little bit. He caught a little elbow up, upside the upside the head a little bit. He's a little dizzy, but I think he's okay. Steers drives inside, loses the ball, turnover, Gillespie, pull up. No good. And off the hands of Steers. So it'll be 
<laughs> Morgan State retaining possession with 6-11 to go. And Steers just stopped playing that last time. You play till you hit a whistle. Even though he thought he was fouled, if there's no whistle, you keep playing. Keep playing. Inside. And a foul. And Steers will pick up the foul and going to the line will be Victor Curry. Good sportsmanship that last time by Justin Steers. He fouled. Curry. Curry. And uh, Curry's at the line. He helped him about to fall. He helped held him up. I thought that was excellent sportsmanship by Justin Steers. Curry one for one at the line tonight. And Curry also has three points. Two for two. Big free throws right here for Victor Curry. One more can pull the team within one. They've led by as many as 14 points this Morgan State team, but Coppin State steady in the second half. They trail by eight at halftime, 41-33, second free throw no good. So 62-60. A steal and a putback and a follow-up by Curry. So he made up for the missed free throw. Got a one point game here. There you go. Get the ball in Dewan Clayton's hand. Go high screen and roll. See what you get. And side facts. Finishes in front of Oslinder. Nice transition offense that time. Strong layup. By Sifax. 63-62. Morgan State with 5-10 to go. Oslander moving across court. Gets it in the hands of Clayton. Back to Oslander. He'll take the three. That's off. Got an off the ball foul. And that's going to be whistled against Devonish Prince. And let's see who's at the line. Looks like it could be Andrews Fulton. It and is the senior out of Philadelphia who's playing with four fouls and has not had a great night. At from the free, free, exactly. Free throw line two of seven. That could be a great foul. Two of seven at the free throw line for Andrews Fulton tonight. Oh, he hit that one. Well, that's free a, throw. That's a big free throw. That's a big one. Tie this game up. Now, who knows how to win, Charlie? 63 all. New game to play for five minutes. Well, you said in the second half about the uh, 12, 10 minute mark, the last five minutes is going to be important. Exactly. How they do down the stretch. Fulton hits them both. And gives his team the lead once again, 64 63. Juan Dixon calling a timeout. Got a 30. What's a 30 second timeout? There's a timeout on the floor with 5.03 to go. And we have a one point ball game, 64 63. When you. Games end. But life keeps on going. The MIAC, educating student athletes for the game of life. At the scope of Norfolk, 64 63, 5 03 to go. MIAC tournament time right here on Flow Sports along with Cy Alexander, Charlie Neal. And it's Morgan State's ball trailing by one. His team led by eight at the half. That is Morgan State, 41 33. And it is amazing that Coppin State was able to come back in this ball game when they've had, they have 20 turnovers right now. To Morgan's only six. Morgan was never able to stretch the lead they had at halftime of eight. The biggest lead they had in the second half was six points, and now Coppin State has come back to take the lead. Remember, Coppin State beat them twice during the regular season, 73-71 at Coppin, and then 
last Thursday at Baltimore at Morgan. It was 83 69 Coppin coming away with the 14 point victory. Four twenty one to go the three ball that falls for Lamar Morgan and he's, it's a 67 63 lead. He shot that one from Baltimore. He sure did. He went out in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Side facts was driving down the lane. The pull up jumper by Devin is Prince. That won't fall. Offensive putback. No good. Stanley Davis just couldn't find the rack. Four point lead for Coppin State. Can they make it three in a row over this Bears team? Auslander's shot is no good. If he'd have buried that, that'd have put the house down. No, it? no doubt. <laughs> This time Stanley Davis still can't get it to fall. And a foul finally. They're really struggling underneath in the paint. And missing a lot of these chippies. easy. Yeah, these easy shots. Curry missed. And it was Stanley Davis missing. And Stanley Davis is going to go to the free throw line. That is foul. Five fouls on Andrews Fulton. He fouls out. You remember his fourth foul he got was a Needless foul. Right, right. It was one of right, those double right. personal fouls. There's a timeout on the floor. 324 to go as Andrews Fulton fouls out with 12 points. He also fouls out with a block shot and six rebounds. Back with more from the scope on Flow Sports in a moment. The time remaining here with 67 63 score four point lead for the Coppin State Eagles. You know we talked about this Morgan State team. They've had some great players over the years themselves. With guys like Marvin Webster. We remember him Evans. Uh, Eric Evans the, 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 the pencil, pencil and the eraser. Right. They had the eraser and Marvin <laughs> Webster. The and pencil the pencil and Eric Evans. Evans, right. Reggie Holmes and Kevin Thompson and Justin Black. Bubakar Coley. They had some great names over the years. Todd Bozeman. Came in in his 13th year as the head man on the campus in Baltimore. The team won this Morgan State team three MEAC tournaments 1977, 2009, and 2010. Aaron Johnson was a coach for a while, and Todd Bozeman, of course, other coaches that's been there was was a uh, Frazier. Nat, Nat Frazier. He was there when I was a young you know, assistant. His, his son at is. His yeah, son his, is uh, on television right. does those uh, entertainment shows. Right, entertainment tonight. Yep, Chris Fuller, Butch Beard. That's right, Butch was over at He Morgan. was there for yeah. a minute, yeah. Mm -hmm. Big free throws right here, can cut it to two. And both of them are made by Stanley Davis. For Morgan State, so he has 12 points for tonight. Perfect at the free throw line. Oh, great move by Justin Steers. Nice reverse layup, nice entry pass. Excellent call by Juan Dixon to get the ball right away to Steers. Went right to the rack. Nice reverse layup. Created the foul. Steers 10 points off the bench for this Coppin State team and has played very well. He has. Since he coming really into has. the lineup. Steers has only played 11 minutes in this contest. But uh, that's like a point a minute, they, isn't it? No doubt. He's done, <laughs> he's done the job. He's earned some minutes if they get a chance to play the Aggies from North Carolina a and State University on tomorrow. He has 11 points. Three minutes to go. Down Again, no call, and Devonish Prince couldn't get it to fall. Ball. Biggest lead for Coppin today. Five points from way outside. Whoa! Can you believe it? Lamar Morgan 
with Pen that three. <laughs> Penetration and pitch from Clayton to Morgan. Downtown. Eight point game. 224 to go. Three from the other side. Doesn't fall. Offensive defensive rebound, Cedric Council. Clayton. I tell you what, give the Eagles a lot of credit. They've shown a lot of fight to come back in this ball game. Clayton has had a quiet 19 point yes. night. Yes, yes. And give Steers, who got. Just didn't fall that just time didn't for fall. Steers. But he had position. Nice penetration that time by Devinish Prince. And again, the young fella just had a rough second half, had a great first half, but uh, really tried to do a little bit too much, in my opinion, in the second half. But let's see if he can can these two free throws. He's a freshman. Oh, you said he's a sophomore then. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, <laughs> I understand what you're saying. You see, <laughs> you're right. I'm just going with what yeah, the legend you, said. You, 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 you're absolutely correct. I'm, I stand corrected. <laughs> after after 30 games yeah. or whatever, he, you're not a freshman not anymore. Not a freshman anymore. Right. He's a freshman in September. Right. This is March. This is March 2019. <laughs> and he's at the free throw line. Averaging 10.6 points per contest. He has 11 points in this game. Big free throws by Devin's Prince. He is uh, at 12 points right now. Right. Four for seven. He had 19 points the first time these two teams met. Nine points the last time they met. And he hits a pair of free throws to make it 73-67, a six-point ball game. Coppin State. Out in front with a minute and 40 to go. The big young fellas in there. Yep. From way outside, Steer. Actually, correction, Morgan. That was Morgan. Another heat check that time. And this time, uh -huh. Devin this Prince gets it to fall. And I'm not sure that's the shot. Even though Lamar Morgan has made a couple. That was early in the shot clock, and it was too deep. You know, yeah, you got, why? Right, that's what he's telling him right now. Right now, that's hero basketball. You don't that's need that tournament championship right. basketball. You don't need that right no, now. You no, got to, you at that particular point. Right. You've got a seven-point lead or six six-point lead, 73-67. And you've got the ball in the front court. Use the shot clock. Use, there you go. Uh, or use the game clock and the shot clock. And the clock. shot clock. Right. Use them both. Take some time off the clock. Don't give the opportunity to your opponent to come back down as they did and score. with Devin is Prince. Exactly. Ran the clock down, ran and the floor down. And scored. Real fast break and scored. And now it's a four-point game with a minute 25 to go. Right. You're playing the clock as much as you are playing the score. Both teams shooting a double bonus at this point. And this foul is going to be whistled against Stanley Davis. But they whistled against Make uh, Medley Bacon, sending him to the line because only a 50% free throw shooter. Right. And that's what they're hoping for. And that's what he's been tonight so far. Two of four exactly. at the line. A lot of tournament pressure on the young fella. First time. Mid Eastern Athletic Conference Tournament. Survive and advance. Good. Oh, good looking stroke that time for the big seven footer. He's got a lot of potential, could have a great career for the Coppin State Eagles over the next four years. Juan Dixon over there giving an earful to Devinish Prince. But big free throws, as you said, for the young freshman, oh. Medley Bacon. I tell you, that was a nice block. Steers has had an outstanding second half. 
he was non-existent in the first half. Played what? How many minutes? 15? No, 13 minutes, and has 11 points. Nice block that time. You got the one play, play in the first half. Right. Yeah, I, he didn't even play in the first half. I got to put that on Coach Dixon. <laughs> <laughs> 15 minutes here in the second half, 11 points. Five or six from the field. Perfect at the line. Two rebounds, two block shots. And only picked up two fouls. You cannot sleep on this Coppin State team. They've got a steady point guard. They've got size. They've got shooters. And they've got a chance to make some noise in this tournament. Well, when you the way they played the first half, you didn't wouldn't think that they were able to do that, right? Right. Nice staying with it by Isaiah Burke. Six point game. 77 71 with under a minute to go. Reverse layup won't fall. The big fella pulls it down, puts it up. Didn't dunk it. But he put it back. They they it. It. <laughs> two points is two points at this point in time. <laughs> That's right. They need three at the other end. Foul. And that's going to send. Clayton to the free throw line. And the foul whistled against Devonish Prince. And that's five on him, or is it? No, shooting two. Shooting two, he's trying to say, Coach Dixon is trying to say it's a flagrant foul because he hit him upside the head. He wants I don't him to think go. he hit him upside the head. I thought he came, came, came across his shoulder. shoulder. Coach Dixon was trying to. Well, he's going to try uh, every right, edge he can. Know, see if he can get the officials to go you to remember, Marlington look at that. Remember, he played at Marlington. He right, coached at Marlington. Right. You know, and some he Gary the NBA. You know some Gary Williams tricks. Yeah. <laughs> Big win though. Three times they beat Morgan, so that tells me they're just better than Morgan this year. Big win for the Coppin State Eagles as they get ready now to play the North Carolina A&T Aggies. Well, Morgan came out like they're saying it's not going to happen three times this year. Right. And now, shot clock is off. I think Morgan's called off the dogs. Ten point ball game. It's going to be a Coppin State advancing to the next round of this 2019 tournament with an 81 71 win over the Bears of Morgan State, their crosstown rival. Juan Dixon's squad will live to dance another day. Survive and advance, Charlie. They've come to the dance and they're going to continue to dance with the final score of 81 71. So for Todd Bozeman and his squad, and Juan Dixon and his squad, and Cy Alexander <laughs> and all of our guys here, Charlie Neal saying so long from the scope in Norfolk. Glad you could join us on Flow Sports for MEAC Tournament Basketball 2019. And again, the final score Coppin State comes back. From an eight point halftime deficit and wins it 81 71. Good night, everyone. <laughs>